studying this over and over again, it's quite clear that. He used to be in Chago then. Oh yeah, Stephen. Look, exactly. <laughs> really? <laughs> you don't have any faith in This year, the seventh, I become a father. <laughs> Change is a very difficult thing. So if, when, if we were, if I was selling horses back in the 1800s, <laughs> an, an upward opportunity would be faster horses. And then you think about from a CEO's perspective, if your marketing team comes to you and says, listen boss, we've got two opportunities, faster horses, right? Everyone's asking for them. We, we understand where to get the horses from. And then someone else in your bring team. Yeah, bring it on. And then someone else comes to you and goes, listen boss, uh, cars. And you go, uh, does, does anyone want cars? No. Are they as good as the horses? They're not. What's the cost? They're more expensive. Fuck like that. <laughs> You're fired. But that is the opportunity in every single industry that ends up disrupting you. So how do you set yourself up to capture both the sustaining innovation and the disruptive innovation? And from studying this over and over again, it's quite clear that you essentially have to set up a, a siloed team. You can't, you can't and you shouldn't expect the current team to pursue the disruptive opportunity. That's what Amazon have done so well. That's what the biggest companies in the world do so spectacularly well. And I'm doing it right now, like in podcasting. Good to see you. Thank you, brother. Thanks. Thanks. The key thing for me is getting, getting, thank you, getting to 50%. Thank you so much. Appreciate you. Thank You're you. Welcome. Okay, I've got two quick meetings to do. One, I'm trying to hire someone to run the recruitment across the whole of the flight group. I'm trying to hire someone to help me get the world, the best people in the world to come and work in our group. You have flight group and within there you have a bunch of different flights. You have flight fund, which was, it's our fund where we're investing in a variety of different companies. There's the flight ventures business where I have all of my investments. We have flight story, which is a marketing business. Um, then we have the flight studio business, which is where the podcast sit, the, the diary of a CEO. What we're doing with that is we're starting a network of podcasts like it. We're looking to take a space in London. That's about 22,000 square feet at the moment. And that's like the flight group. It's kind of like what Richard Branson did with the Virgin Group. That's kind of what where I need the help is. I want to bring the, the best people in the world to come and work at the flight group across all of our companies. Um, yeah, yeah. And I'm looking for someone that can do that with us. And secondly, I'm having conversations about investing in a company that I love. We run by a founder that I think is world class. I've got a question for you about wh yes. what you would like me to bring to to your business. And I think you could offer a lot of counsel on to B2B marketing. You know, we could create a software as a service product. You've got a whole team around it, right? So I think there could be some yeah. good checks and balances around the software development side. The like, developer variance quality is really, really profound in everything in speed and quality. So this is why literally I've flown these two kids over from San Francisco that I keep banging on about because I asked my team to build this. When these videos go live onto the internet, on YouTube, etc., onto platforms, you get a ton of data after the fact. And that data is really interesting because it tells you what part of this video you're watching now was interesting. And it looks something like this. So my hypothesis has always been, what if we could get that data before we publish the video onto the platforms? And these two developers built the thing in a day. Good to chat, mate. Speak to you soon. Good Thank you. Bye-bye. So this guy that yeah, was in Dragon, Dragon Den. Really? That is, that he did a podcast. Ah, yeah, um, I know who he is. He used to be in Dragon Den. Oh yeah, Stephen. Stephen, Stephen Bartlett. Bartlett. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. You look exactly. Really? When you first attack, is that it? I get that all the time. That's what you mean. I'm asking you right next to No, I get that all the time. Everyone stops me and says, You look like Stephen Bartlett. And I'm like, you Really? Yeah. I get Stephen Bartlett. Rizzle kicks. I get Rizzle kicks. Rizzle kicks, yeah. No worries. No worries. <laughs> Hello, good afternoon. Hello, you're right. Hello. 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 Hello.
This drives two hours. Can I get my stuff out of the car? Can I get my bag, please? Small black black one, thank you. Two hours, Jesus. Launch a company in that time. <laughs> Finally announced to you this ski trip. Oh, Look at that presentation! Where are we going? We are going to Morzine, an hour and a half outside of Geneva. Um, the reason why we've gone here, it's got the largest connected ski slopes across uh, the Alps, and it's great for all levels, so it means that no one's going to feel out of their comfort zone. Why are we going? <laughs> hey! We deserve it because we want to have fun together, and because Andrews, who is the queen of Morzine, she gave it the skill of approval. There we go, there we go. Where are we staying? So. We will be in groups of six, roughly. They'll be split into level of ability once we've established how good you are on the slopes on the first day, right? There's a total of 28 of us. We've got a flight studio. We've also got Bali Breathwork joining us. We've got new starters at the fund. They're all gonna be on this trip. There's a few moving parts, but Tuesday's the day that we're all together. So we will do an official app ray um, and have a great time party. Um, Watch all the vlogs. I need to update one of the biggest 1% of last year. And in June, this year, the 7th, I become a father. Wait, 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 wait there's more! I'm also becoming a father! Let's go ski! <laughs>
Chuck is the stairs there. Chuck is the stairs there, man. This is the stairs. This is the stairs. My favorite food thing is here. Got a barbershop, supplements, a little bit of cardio up here as well. Down here is like one of the weights that I in. I'm never doing it. like it. Really, really vibes. I'm real. Appreciate you, thank you. Thank you, brother. I'm looking forward to seeing you now. Oh, good. See you there. I saw you a month ago yeah. in Dubai. Oh, at yes. the Billion, uh, oh, yeah. Billion Follower uh, Summit. Um, we met yeah. the Kings, some of the Kings family, and that's actually part of the reason why we're back here now is because we've got some meetings with them. Super cool to meet you, seriously. Thank you. Yeah. I'm looking forward yeah. to our conversation. Tell me, like, what are you excited about? Is there something that you want me to I, focus on? Is there something you're particularly passionate about now? Anything that the audience are interested in, and I'll try and find my bridge to the audience. If you had to, like, encapsulate what the audience have in common. Mm. They want to be like you. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> Probably. Careful what so you wish for. <laughs> group and I know what he did there and how he did that and I'm really inspired by that so that's really my next like 10 or 20 years the key to doing this though and I, this is a bit of a, a paradox if I was at the start of my career I would advise people to do that if, if I was at the start of my career I'd advise you to focus and once you've focused enough that you build enough resources and fill those five buckets that I talk about, you have reputational leverage, you have resources that you can invest in people and teams, etc. You, you have knowledge and skills, um, then I would try and diversify. But at the start of your career, you shouldn't. Now the game I'm playing is really a game of hiring the best people in the world. And this for me is a lesson that I wish everyone had told me day one when I started my first business, was that your outcomes won't be solely down to your brilliance, your ideas and your hard work. What I learned three years in was that the role of a founder is to hire the world's best people, to bind them with a culture that makes that gets the best out of them and to set them a valuable mission. The job of hiring anyway isn't to tell people what to do, it's for them to tell you what to do. And the minute you can get out of the way of your own ego and pride, you can step into your own success. And the minute I did that, my career and my life changed. So many founders think the job is to be right, the job is to be successful, and they are two very different things. I interviewed Walter Isaacson, who spent two years following Elon Musk, and then he spent two years following Steve Jobs before Steve Jobs died. And before Steve Jobs died, he was sat in Steve Jobs' back garden, and he said, Steve, of all these products that you've invented, the iPhone, the iPad, all of these things, what's your favorite product that you've ever created? And he said, the team. Most important product I ever created was the team, the Macintosh team, that early team. That was the most important product I ever made because the team is the, the source of the brilliance. It's the source of every idea you have. So if you want brilliant products, build a brilliant team. Well, thank you so thank much you. for thank you. inspiring us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Writing books are so interesting. You're writing it. The crazy part is like you, you almost don't believe at the time that anyone's, anyone's going to read it. No, just anyone's going to read it. Like I can't, there's this real out experience where you like, you, I wrote this in a jungle alone. And then people come up to me in Sharjah and are like, I'm like, <laughs> I don't know, it's, it's hard to explain. Because everything else you do, you never get to touch it or see it. Like videos or just. It's just out there and it goes and then it yeah. disappears after a couple of days. But these things, they follow you for years.
Fadroku time is 8.16 in the evening and the outside temperature is 13 degrees Celsius. <laughs>